Hello everyone, I'm Tatiana Carvalho Costa and along with these two amazing women, we are here today at Carla 2020 to join the conversation on diversity and inclusion in film and television. I'm a researcher, programmer and a teacher here in Brazil and I'm also an advisory board member of WIFT Brasil. And I'm here today to host this panel, Oppositional Gaze and Decolonial Cinema in Brazil. This is one of the two conversation in the Focus Brazil program. The other one is confronting inequality in the Brazilian audiovisual industry and will happen right after this one. Um, with Brazil war warmly welcomes and thanks our guests that join me here today. We're here with Janaína Oliveira and Joyce Prado. Joyce is the executive director of the Association of Black Audiovisual Professionals, APAM, here in Brazil. She holds a BA in Media Studies from Belas Artes College and she specialized in script writing. In 2012, she started to work as a producer director of several film ads, short films, also fiction and documentary, and TV series. In 2014, she founded Oxalá Produções, a production company focused on black communities and Afro-diaspora cultures. Uh, producing Ita's Gwen Mateo in 2016, You Heart in 2017, Letters of May in 2018, Beyond Ads and Branded Content. Joyce is also the crea creative producer of Oshala's next project, Zion, and Habitant. The last one is her debut feature as a director. Janaina is a researcher has a PhD in history and is a professor at the Federal Institute of Rio de Janeiro. She's a Fulbright Scholar at the Center of African Studies at Howard University in Washington, DC. And she is the programmer of the Zosimo Bubu Black Cinema Encounter in Rio de Janeiro and also FINCAR International Women Filmmakers Festival in Recife. In 2018, she was a guest curator in International Film Festival of Rotterdam, IFFR, and she's current, uh, the program, currently she's the programmer of the Fly to Seminar in the US. As many of you may know, Brazil is facing a deep political and economic crisis intensified by the pandemic. The federal government here had declared a cultural war within our borders and is openly against the culture, education and freedom of expression. All of these affects directly our film and television fledging industry. As the government continues with its destruction policy, we witness an increase in misogynist, racist, and LGBT phobic attitudes from the government itself and also from a significant part of the population. But this sad scenario is not caused only by this authoritarian far right government. Um, I'd like to look at it as a symptom of our colonial history and our fragile 30-year recent democracy. Well, we thought we were a democracy at least, but in 2016 and um, facing our recent election process, um, we had to come to terms that all of this of our recent history proved us that we were wrong. And we had to face this fragility. Um, what we think is a democracy is a very, very fragile uh, way of our society um, to work. Film and television are agents on a complex and idiosyncratic imaginary and historically contribute to reinforce the hierarchical subjectivities in a society full of inequalities such as our here in Brazil. <laughs> I painted a terrible scenario, I know, sorry for that. But besides all of that, I'm optimistic. The pandemic and the deep political economic crisis that we are in today, it widely opened the collapse of representation frameworks, um, the collapse of production models, and the ways our market and precarious industry operate. So, um, we are here today, the three of us were black women, 
And this crisis, I think, tells us about something that always happened to us, black people in Brazil, indigenous people in Brazil, women of uh, lower income classes in Brazil, and all the population, they are not up at the top of the chain. Um, facing this colonial history, this crisis, or what this crisis brings, it's not something new for us. It's not something about uh, what we think um, could be framed on this present time. It's about what constitutes the modern idea of progress uh, itself. Progress understood here um, as this machine that puts time in service of wealth and opportunities for only a few part of the global population. And it's not different here in Brazil. The idea of progress, the word, word that is in our flag, progress, is this modern idea uh, that implies exclusion. Uh, so we think it's about time to change that, this idea of exclusion implied in the idea of progress. And well, we're just uh, a grain in the sand, all the sand. But we're here today to talk not only about crisis, we are here today also to talk about possibilities and future, or in a way, some idea of future. So I welcome you again, Janaina and Joyce, to join me here in this conversation. And I'd like to start with Joyce to comment on this, this current situation, but um, facing what I just said, that it's not about this present time, it's about what constitutes us as a society. And um, in which ways you think this reflects in our film industry and your, and um, I'd like to hear from you about your trajectory. Uh, how did you um, become part of this industry? What happened? And what makes you uh, evaluate the situation that is happening to us right now? Welcome again. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Thank you, everyone who is watching. Hello. Um, I really like the introduction that you made because it took me to some words that I think it's been talking very much nowadays, like collapses and crisis. But as you said, it's not news for us. It's not a new situation. So I really think that we need to um, talk about how we're going to move forward, but especially how are we make just now to face different crises that we've been pressing through and uh, just as the time that the black population are in Brazil. So it's been a long time that we are facing crisis and that we are finding answers and actions for it. So uh, I have 33 years old and I've been working with cinema since 18. So I saw the, the beginning of YouTube and the beginning of all this changing of technology and how it model or start to pressure the cinema to um, start a different dialogue with the public and how the streamings and the VOD nowadays is also make us to re-understand what we are expecting from this industry related to the distribution way, but also related to how we product, how we make these productions and how many nowadays, how much work we have to offer more to the consumers. We need to have much more content and also to have more different kinds of representations in these contents too. So related to it, um, it's not from today, it's not because of the pandemic that the cinema and the art house cinema is passing through these moments where uh, different identities are not identifying themselves with this universal partner of Europe. And at the same time, how are we going to start to decolonize the cinema in a way that we can put different 
um, profiles of characters, of stories, of narratives and cultures in the screens. How are we going to start to do that? Uh, related to it, I think that in cinema and the cinema production inside the Black filmmakers in Brazil, we are also pressured related to this narrative, related to this counter narrative, related to how we're going to start to show this community far from the stereotypes, far from the stereotypes, and at the same time showing the complexity of the black people as human beings. So um, people just don't want to consume Hollywood movies related to how is the experience of black people. And at the same time, Brazilian black people want to also see themselves in the screens. How are we going to show these stories and it started to think then from a, a different route, you know, starting from what is this experience, what is the diaspora experience, what is the experience of these people and how we can reconnect with our memories who were so suppressed through a history who were taught through Europe and through European um, history, you know, like in Brazil, the kids need to study Europe for their whole lifetime at school. So how we can even start to talk about the colonial ways of approaching in every kind of production of culture and theory and, and studies, if we not even stimulated to start to think the world in a different perspective. So for me, cinema is pretty related to perspective and how we share perspective with the world and how we're going to look to the society and criticize it and also to try to understand it. So all these movements, I think it also connects a lot with what you brought related to the collect, to, sorry, related to the collapse of the models of production. So this is something that I've been thinking a lot since I started a production company, how is going to be the relations in this process? What is to do cinema beyond the, the, beyond the, the, the image of this director who defines everything, who, who commands people, but how are we going to see cinema as a process of collective of people, of co-authors, people have listened and through the researches that are based, especially facing the, um, the authors, the black female authors here in Brazil and what they share with us related to what we are as a population in this country and what we need to show in the screens related to what is the history and how we need to reconnect with it and with our livings in this country, you know, what we've been living here, how is this community, what is the culture, what is the music, how are the relationships, and how the slavery is part of the way that we build the relationships inside family, inside love, and all these perspectives that is part of this so complicated life and in a, such a racist country, how are we going to also show what is this black community beyond the colonial view related to us? Thank you, Joyce. Um, I'd like to listen to what Janaina has to say now, and then we go back to the conversation among the three of us. So Janaina, um, what do you have to say on this scenario? Uh, I'll remark again that I painted a, a terrible scenario, but um, I think <laughs> we could be optimistic at some point, at, a, at some level. What, uh, what do you have to, to tell us about this, about your analysis on this <laughs> scenario? <laughs> yeah, so first I wanna, you know, thank you all for being here. 
Thank you, Carla's invitation for this conversation. Thank you, Tatiana, for doing the moderation and Joyce for you know the debate. Not, we are not debating, it's just more like exchanging ideas. Um, first, uh, maybe, maybe I want to start uh, thinking a little bit about, uh, you know, talking a little bit about the, 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 the proposition we have in this conversation when we talk about the positional gaze, I think, you know, this is the starting point. When we talk about oppositional gaze, of, of course, we are referring um, um, to Bell Hook's uh, text on Black Lutz when she's going to talk about female as spectators and how Black women had to create um, a space to live in cinema, how cinema is not bound to cinema in general, it's not bound to. Um, black women and how we had to, you know, just, uh, I, I forgot the, the expression she used, but uh, space, agency space, space of agency, something like that. When she talked about this, you know, urgency that for a black women to be able to attend, to watch films, we have to create another reality to exist. So I think this is pretty much what we are talking about now when we talk about crisis, that uh, for us to exist in cinema, we, our um, departing point is a little bit different because we are not from the beginning part of it. So the way we face um, different crises, because now we, we speak about crisis, but what, what crisis we are talking about? <laughs> because it's so, I mean, uh, facing now uh, everything with uh, the COVID situation is a little bit different because things like that the other crises are of course um, not sm smaller but they are kind of in the second plan somehow but you know but maybe it, it's good for us to talk to suspend a little bit with the pandemic thing because you know, when we talk about pandemics, it's about surviving. It's not, you know, it's just like, it's being, you know, like I am here outside of Rio, isolated. And I'm sorry in advance if you listen to a dog barking because there's a dog in the yard. And, and um, so I was, I was, as we were talking about this panel, I was remembering uh, a discussion that I have, not a discussion, it was another panel that I participated in a film industry event last year here in Brazil, maybe one of the most important um, film industry events that we have. So I was in a panel uh, with um, two white men, one producer and another programmer, and we were discussing the crisis, the Brazilian crisis in cinema because you know, related to all the situation that we are facing after 2016, when there was this political coup and Dilma Rousseff was impeached. And then we have this now other guy in <laughs> occupying the presidency. <laughs> and as Tatiana pointed out in her introduction that, you know, he's kind of, there's this cultural war against education and, and culture and, non-white male people in general <laughs> so if you are not you know um, white uh, heterosexual men in brazil now somehow you're part of the opposition <laughs> and um and then in, by 2000 um like last year 2019 we were discussing the the the, the crisis that cinema brazilian cinema was facing because he was shutting down the presidency was the government was shutting down all the funds and and there was this kind of urgency like we are in this crisis now this is where my colleagues talk somehow of course i'm a little bit you know exaggerating here but it was just kind of an urgent call to do something uh, about this crisis uh film brazilian film industry was facing um you know uh, in this at this time in this government, this new government that started in 2019. But then um, I was a little bit impressed that when we talk about crisis, you know, uh, it seems like we are on the same path. Like, so let's go to the front and fight. And so my talk now, it's a little bit uh, connected to what I'm saying now. So it's, let's say, you know, take, uh, took a step back and talk what crisis we are talking about because 
historically, Brazilian cinema is pretty much excluded. We are not never part of big budgets. Uh, we who are talking, I'm talking about uh, the alleged minorities because we are not minority because we have 56% of the population. I'm talking about black people, um, indigenous people, uh, LGBTQ, whatever community. And, you know, so we are not part of the film industry when we talk about um, money for feature films, for example. You know, we can count, you know, on a one hand, how many feature films produced and uh, directed by black people uh, we had in Brazil. So since the beginning of film industry. <laughs> so, so, and so I suggested by then that we took a step back and, and profit the occasion, you know, uh, since we are living, of course, it's a crisis. But to think about uh, how we are, uh, are gonna fight this together, if we are fighting this together, because it's also, um, a kind of political argument or political uh, position. So when we have a problem, we are all together. When we find solutions, so we come back for everyone's shield, you know. So of course, it was a little bit shocking when I was <laughs> asking what crisis we are talking about and a little bit, of course, provoking my, my colleagues then to reflect in a different perspective. It has to do with Joyce, what Joyce was, um, was talking about kind of decolonize the system. So if we don't decolonize, you know, a little bit the system, so how, is gonna, how are we gonna supposed to fight this? So I'm telling you this not, you know, to come back to this discussion, but not, but just to, you know, try to think um, a little bit different about, to approach differently when we talk about crisis, because, you know, we black people, we have been surviving crisis for 400 years. So we had a kind of expertise in that. So based, based in that expertise, I think we are gonna survive it too. You know, if we survive Corona, we are gonna survive, you know, the, the film crisis and everything. This, this is the, 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 I think, you know, the pandemic now for us the more, is the most difficult part. And then, um, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, telling this situation just to say that I believe also that crisis, they are also an opportunity to think differently about things. And I'm not saying, I'm not part of this, you know, people, group of people that saying, oh, let's profit the pandemic situation to change things. No, no, it's not that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that, you know, I, 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 I don't believe we, we needed a pandemic to do things differently. But as we are here, <laughs> so let's do something uh, about it. And um, I also, uh, you know, because my relationship to uh, film industry uh, in general, film films, um, beyond being an spectator, as a, as a researcher and a programmer. And um, what I'm thinking about uh, the way of Black Brazilian filmmakers and producers um, do uh, succeed to make films, and you know in the last 10 years that when we can say we have a kind of black film movement here, a group of considering uh, an expressive amount of films and initiatives. Uh, I think like the hegemonic film in the Subazil, it's gonna take it as a model somehow, the way we succeed to make films in very adverse situations. So, um, I think we, we, through this hard background that we have here, this historical student uh, film industry that we have in Brazil, we somehow succeed to set up or to understand some strategies to, of surviving the system somehow. I mean, that does mean that the system not need, need to be need, uh, changed. Uh, it's just that, you know, I think we have somehow the tools, where to find the tools, I think. Um, to look of those non-hegemonic uh, experiences in cinema is a way because we are talking about also possibilities and 
futurity and so since everything is so uncertain and um, so hard to you know just guess how it's gonna be for example 2021 how the festivals are going to be, how circulation is going to be, how it's going to be at, to be at the, the film, uh, at the theater to watch films. So I think for now we should just, you know, take a look to the way we are doing things and, um, and, trying, and try to adjust or adapt somehow. What I'm trying to say basically is that um, I, I believe we are going to survive this crisis. I'm optimist, like Tatiana, in this sense. Uh, I'm not sure how, but I do believe that we are going to survive. Uh, also, when I look, um, but it's a kind of tricky situation because, for example, my experience as a programmer, um, in, I've been observing some film festivals in Brazil and abroad. Um, I'm also, I, I also work for Locarno Film Festival as an advisor for African and Black diaspora films. So what I see is that this is not related to the pandemics, previous uh, the pandemics. What I see is that film festivals uh, in Brazil and abroad, they are um, being forced you know, just somehow to change their perspective on diversity. Like, um, not that, I think it's not something that, you know, they wanted to do, but it's that we, we, we came to a point uh, that it's no way that a film festival can move forward with this same excluding or hegemonic perspective without some, including or bringing elements of diversity, you know, in a more consistent way. I think this is not gonna change. I think this is a, a path that is open and because the films somehow, they force the, the, the festivals to change, um, change like including um, uh, POC programmers and, um, and diversifying the programs in general, I think this is not gonna change. Uh, but also, I think the other part is gonna also be the same. So I believe it's gonna be the, the same thing, uh, sorry for the dogs, uh, same situations that we are facing, we were facing previous the pandemic, we are gonna face after. But, we have an advantage that are those tools that we that I was mentioning. So I believe somehow markets and film festivals, everybody's afraid to come back because no one wants to be the first one to come back because we have no idea how it's gonna be. Locarno, for example, was that happened uh, you know uh, um, two weeks ago. Um, it was a kind of hybrid format, so they had. Uh, few screenings, I think, but only with, I think, eight people maximum in the theater. But the, the great part of the festival, they found a way to make it online. And um, I heard from my colleagues that, you know, it was, it was different and a little bit, you know, it was empty, you know, because uh, 300 places, uh, theater to have 80 people, just like, it's different, it's a different way of, so, but I heard also that it was nice to have this hybrid format. Here in Brazil, the, all the festivals in 2020, they are gonna be online. There's no festivals that, as, as far as I'm concerned, that's gonna be, that's going to be hybrid or have any kind of presence, potential activities. So as the festivals are, are fighting to find a format, I think also to produce films from now on is gonna be uh, somehow challenging and somehow, you know, we, we're gonna have to adapt. You know, I'm, I'm very concerned for those uh, filmmakers and producers that were stuck during the pandemic, how they're gonna make it to, 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 to made films to 
analyze the films or the process that they were doing. Um, all, also about the money. So everybody's concerned, you know, the, those, the sponsors are also, everybody's a pretty much apprehensive how it's going to be. So, uh, you know, I want to believe that this historical, sad, traumatic expertise that we gained during, you know, all these 500 years <laughs> plus or this um, 100 years of cinema being excluded somehow counts in our favor. And um, yes, I mean, somehow I believe that we are the future. You know, the Bridget of Mabati in the 19th, he, the Senegalese filmmaker, he uh, used to say always that African cinema is the future of cinema. I would add that, you know, the non-hegemonic cinemas, are, we are the future of cinema somehow. That's what I'm really attached to. This is, this is my hope. So this includes not only what we see on the screen, but how we made films. That's it. Thank you. Sorry for the dogs. I'm going to turn <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, just like... Thank you, Janaina. I also believe that that non-hegemonic non film, uh, films and ways of producing them, distributing them, and thinking about them, uh, I think this, is, this already is what we can consider the future. Because this future is, is already happening. It has happened in Africa. We are talking oh, here what no for example we are uh, you know film industry before this pandemic thing and and people were very concerned for example one discussion is about the format how we talk about cinema and people are now watching things on their phones <laughs> you know, somehow this is not very important now but you know what i'm trying to say about you know the the different strategies and ways yeah. because at, at the same time watching films in the phones on the phones is what it makes films possible for a lot of people that you know at first is not able to go to a theater to watch anything, to attend to a film festival. Yeah. So I don't know. Sorry yeah, you have to, to, to take this for granted, the inequalities, the lack of money, the, the centralization in certain, in certain regions, uh, the access to films, the access to the money, everything we have, uh, of all of this we have to take for granted. And um, you, you were talking about um, optimism. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, but I'm not romanticizing the crisis, you know. But I think we have to strongly pay attention to a way that a crisis tends to turn things to a normal param parameter. And by normal, I mean this excluded normal, this normal that tends to concentrate, this normal that I was talking about this normal that I'm talking about is related to what I was talking about modernity and this idea of progress that is, um, and, and I think it's the core of the problem we, we are facing with or without pandemic. And many people here in Brazil say, say that we're facing a phase when they talk about uh, the presence of black people and indigenous people in the film industry as something that uh, should not be um, in the front of the conversation for a long time. You know, I'm, I'm sure that many, that all of you have listened to this expression. This is a phase, this will pass. The crisis tends to intensify this idea of phase, of our presence in this industry and this precarious industry, because in, here in Brazil, we have an idea of industry that is very fragile when we look at it closely. And the other panel uh, that will happen right after this one, we'll talk more about this political um, and um, public policies and the, the way social movements um, contributed to, um, 
to some changes in Brazil historically. But uh, back to, our, to, to the point I was trying to make in here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that we should not romanticize the opportunity of the crisis, but to look at it, frankly, thinking um, about the way things tend to go back to some kind of nor normal that is excludent. Because uh, when, um, when money is not on the table, when we don't have um, the amount of money we used to have to make films in Brazil, the way, uh, uh, the way our society and, very, uh, and many other societies work is by concentration. This money goes to the hands that um, historically had money. There is no tendency of distribution unless there is uh, pressure, uh, unless there is a strong will to change things. This is the kind of change I'm talking about, to change the system, as you said, decolonize it here in Brazil. And my point is also about allies. Janaina said that the presidency we have, the, 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 the men we have in the presidency represents some kinds of, some kind of values. And if you're not a man, a white male, heterosexual, and I would add cisgender male, you're not part of your club. But I like to, talk, to call attention to women and black people that are trying to be part of this club and act against women in general, women rights in general, LGBT people rights in general, in general black people, indigenous people, non-white people in general. And the, 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 the part that our allies, white people, in general, especially white women play in this game. Because as Jota Mombasa and Cynthia Gedges used to say, ally is not uh, unstable, it's not a stable category. And again, things tend to go back to normal. So um, we're here today to remark this, that this is an opportunity for things to go back to something else than normal. We don't want things to go back to normal because normal is not about us. The idea of normal is not about us. Um, in general, in our society in general, especially in the film industry. Uh, so we're, um, we got a few minutes left and um, I'd like to hear from you about this or about something else you'd, you'd like to talk about within uh, the theme of this panel. Um, and I think I'll start now with the Joyce again and then Janaina, okay? And uh, each one of you will have uh, five minutes to talk and then it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> I'd like to start um, commenting on this phase or this wave, right? I think it's really important to think how the community of Black filmmakers in Brazil uh, has grown in the past decades, uh, especially after the affirmative actions that we have in universities and other spaces of education. And it's really important that we see now that we are not um, some people, but we are a community of filmmakers, a community of professionals. So this is the base for us to see how this is not a wave or not a face, because we already have a community and this community is growing. And the ones that can decide it and can pressure and can make efforts for this phase not to end is ourselves. Besides the industry, we need to uh, understand how the public of these contents are willing to watch these films, are willing to see themselves and are willing to consume these products. And at the same time, we get to this 
other part of this crisis that never ends that is related to money, is related to have budgets, is related to have access to funds, and related to it. I think this gets to a point which is really important to talk about and it's something that really bothers me related to all the crisis related to pandemic. What is shared and what is social justice and equity? And we need to aim to social justice. We not aim for charity. We need to aim for the more public actions, government actions. We need to aim for our industry in this country, and especially with the comings of huge VOGs like Amazon, Netflix, Google Play, YouTube, that we need to talk about social justice inside the society. And diversity is not only to hire people, but it's to also give tools for production companies of black people to, uh, to uh, structure themselves. So itself. So it's really complicated the way that people think that we want money. We don't want, we don't want only money. We want money, structure, funds, access, we want contracts, you don't understand. We want to have uh, production companies. We want to have production companies who are committed with diversity and who are owned by black people also. For us to start to change from inside these companies, the strategies, the hegemonic ways of productions, they need to have the other standards for it. It cannot be only one way. The world doesn't need to be like this. And this industry doesn't need to be like this. But at the same time that we have the pressure that Janaina said related to have more diversity on the festivals, inside each country, we also have the pressure for the things not to change. So as she brought, at the same time that when there is a problem, is a problem of everyone, and when it's a solution, is a solution for fields. This is what we are facing for a long time. And as a black female producer and a, a black female uh, director, what I found and what is a little bit of the solution for myself was I know that no people is going to knock on my door and say that they are going to support or they, they are going even to notice any kind of talents that I have to develop a project. So to have a production company is an answer for myself to how make things to happen. And for this production company, I cannot only aim one kind of content and one kind of window of distribution. So in here, we need to work with several kinds of contents. At the same time, most of them are with low budget, and most of them also trying to pressure this a different perspective. This is the colonial, the colonial perspective, you know, understand it, and also look for this space of the black woman inside cinema and inside audiovisual at a, as a whole, because we are not there. We are not there. Our perspectives are not there yet, not on what is mainstream. So, and also for each one of us, each black woman who is thinking their projects, most of them has a production company of their own or are working in a production company of other black people. So uh, I think that we are, we are just having to constant pressure for this not to be a phase. And this depends most of the time of ourselves and how we need to engage our community, the black community, which is the majority of the population in Brazil, into our context. And at the same time, engage them to the debates of the society that they are in. I think all the time we are doing this debate and we are trying to make more people conscious related to how the, the films of the cinema, of the Brazilian cinema nowadays, doesn't translate their experience, doesn't translate their feelings, doesn't translate, translate their realities. 
and most of the time just put that on a low class human being type understand? so it's always about making us less humanized so related to all of this i i bring these less words to like constant pressure and social justice this is what we are needing to have and this pandemic didn't show me at all that the world is ready for a real social justice action we are not and this new normal is not different from before because we still didn't have uh, a path of equality we still didn't have the the big amounts of money being shared and distributed in the right way. We still aiming on charity. And this is a huge problem related to how we're going to change the, the world that we are now in, with these hegemonic standards. But as black people, we need to pressure and inside cinema, we are pressure aiming it. Uh, I, I wanna, you know, just talk long, just, uh, uh, when you're talking about uh, space and wave, it's funny because how, how, you know, how, what do you say, not stable, this also, this argument is somehow, because I remember when I start studying or researching and after programming on black films, people used to tell me first that black films in Brazil, there's not a, such a there was not such a thing. And after, um, when they could not deny it anymore, this presence, this existence, they were saying like, oh, it's a phase, <laughs> you know, just like, it's gonna pass. And then uh, it made me think about how we got there, how we got to this point when there was just like few uh, pioneers, like, you know, Zosimo Bubu and Dara Sampaio, even the uh, Joel Zito, uh, Araújo generation, how was just a feel to this, what we can say now as Joy Sustainable Community. This is what part of, you know, uh, uh, a long history of fight of black movements, but also of 16 years of public uh, education policies that changed somehow the profile of Brazilian society when a lot of folks that, you know, majority of black folks were, that were in the lower classes were able to access universities, colleges, and some kind of uh, education uh, in a not only on a basic level. So, but what I'm saying is because there are things that you can take back. So you can't, we cannot retrocede in this point. Vilma Hayes, that is a Brazilian, um, is, is, is she a sociologist? As, but she was also almost the candidate for the mayor here of Salvador. She used to say that a few years ago when she received an award, I don't remember, that we are not, you know, we are not going to, we are not going to retrocede. We are not, we are at the point that there are things that people, no matter what they do, uh, they cannot take back. It's ours. So just, you know, to get this information, I think this is important. <laughs> this is something. So they can try, but, you know, they, I mean, they cannot force us to retrocede. This is something that we conquer and we are here. So what I think now, what do, it's about uh, to fight in different fronts. And then as we are doing, in fact, this, that's what I'm trying to say that the way to proceed in the future is somehow, it was just said, you know, uh, uh, before, it's just like, we have a front that need to fight for politi for, for public politics on, on films, because people also had to understand abroad that Brazilian film history is based on uh, public money. That's something different that people somehow, they don't understand how it works. But if you look to any Brazilian blockbuster, the most of the, 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 the majority of the budget is, co is coming from public funds directly or indirectly via tax and private budget but and companies, but this is something that people had to have in mind to understand a little bit of our fight. So we need somehow to be organized to, to fight this front that's related to the government, um, 
transition related to film industry and also how the film uh, industry community in Brazil is fighting for the same alight as always. And so we have to be organizing that. And somehow, since we have this, um, uh, how, how a pun is in, in English, uh, this uh, Black Professionals Associations, is that? Uh, so we had this since 2016. I'm so bad in days. Is it that Joyce is one of the directors, Vianney Ferreira, that's going to be in the next panel, is uh, actually the president. So we have a pun fighting, for example, in a very consistent way, this front, this dialogue. This is a thing. It's not only, uh, it's not uh, all we need, but it's a very important um, uh, uh, it's a very important representative of, of everything that of all the black community, let's say. This is one front. So in the other front, filmmakers, they have to keep on doing films the way they are doing. In the other front, uh, I'm gonna, me, Tatiana, and other programmers, we are gonna still programming and fighting for spaces and doing things and scholars like me and also Tatiana, we're gonna be keep on publishing and studying and doing things. You know, I think it's the kind of, uh, you know, this kind of strategy that we should, that we've been doing. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. That's why I, I that's made me not, um, not romanticizing the future, but at all, but not being so depressed and stuck in a way in the present that I don't want to do anything because I was in this kind of emotional limbo when this pandemic thing started. Like, what now? Because I was working so hard and suddenly everything was just like stopped. So now that we are back in, um, in movement somehow, that's what, that's my feeling. So uh, there's not such a thing as new normal. There's only one normal, a normal that we are not part of it. So <laughs> we are not coming back to this, <laughs> you know, because it's not working. It's a kind of genocide normal. We are dying, you know, we are dying in the front holes of the, combating, fighting this uh, pandemic. We are dying because we have no money. For example, there are people that uh, till now, the great part of the population that had no jobs anymore or hadn't before, and they are waiting for some government help. They're still waiting. And we are talking about 600 reais. It's just like $100, $200, less than $200 for a family. And they're still waiting. And they have to go out and, and face uh, you know, go to the bank and, and fight for a thing that was supposed to be a right. So, you know, it's so cruel. <laughs> and so that's, that's um, I don't believe that such a thing as a new normal is going to happen only for rich people. So they can like have uh, a seat in the plane only with, you know, with three other seats empty, <laughs> something like that. But for poor people that now, that for the first time in Brazil in the last decade were able to travel, to do a plan, uh, uh, you know, to fly somewhere, and um, this is not gonna happen anymore. So we are back. In fact, in somehow we are not, the new normal is, is sadly, it's not a lot, only about the pandemic, it's about this uh, government, but not only this government, it's just, it's since what happened after 2016, that we are back to, uh, in terms of politics for Brazil, that's, it, I don't know, by the end of the dictatorship, like in the 80s. That's, that's what we are, <laughs> you know, that's somehow. But I don't want to focus on that because this is really depressing. I pretty much want to focus on this, you know, kind of plural strategies that we have and we're gonna keep on doing things no matter what that's my point and that's how uh social justice and some what are some you know level of equality i don't know, know if it's is it it's possible i don't i really don't believe decolonizing is possible somehow you know uh, itself like how how i think we can decolonize uh, situations moments actions but you know capitalism won't allow us to decolonize all so we have also to be very you know realistic about that but that's it you know this is not a, a thing to be said about it's just a thing that we have to take okay 
as, a, as we take this uh, uh, statement, we also take that, that other one that I say that we are to a point that we are not coming back. So let's see how it goes. That's it. <laughs> yes, you. that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for your <laughs> words.